welcome back to my channel. Today I have a cooking video for you. Uh, I'm going to make a recipe that is near and dear to my heart, something that I truly, truly love. And um, this is a recipe not only for my mom, but for my brother. And today I'm going to be making a uh, pozole for you today. Or it's kind of a variation of menudo without the tripe. So a tripeless menudo or pozole. Now there's a couple different ways you can make pozole. You can do it the traditional way, which is a um, a brothy type of soup with the meat and the hominy in it, or you can make it like I'm going to make it today where I, I am using the chili ristras to make it more of a menudo-like uh, pozole, but only without the tripe. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so today I'm going to take you over the ingredients um, so we can get started. So first and foremost, you're going to need um, meat. And here I have pork. This is the uh, Kroger brand and it is the uh, pork loin um, baby back ribs. Um, I have two, two slabs here. Um, you can also use pork loin. You can dice it up and use that if you, if you prefer not to use ribs. Or you can also use pork chops, chop them up, whatever's in your freezer. Um, you can also use beef if you don't like pork or you don't want to use pork. You can use beef ribs. Um, that's what my cousin uses and she says it's amazing. Um, and, you know, use whatever you have uh, in your freezer. That's what I always say. So I'm going to use the baby back ribs with the bone because I believe that the, and I feel that you get a better flavor. Um, there is a lot of flavor in the bones of the baby backs and I think it tastes a lot better than using um, a diced up roast, pork loin roast or pork chops. But do use whatever uh, you like and whatever's in your freezer. So let's go ahead and start from um, the right here. First and foremost, you're going to need not only your, your baby back ribs, you're going to need the dried chili ristras. Um, you can find these in the um, Hispanic section. Hispanic section or the international section, however your supermarket has it labeled. Um, they're usually with all the Hispanic spices, your red chili, what and what have you. Um, and the Fernandez brand is pretty well known. You can get these at any grocery store. I've seen them. I used to live in Las Vegas. They had them there as well as here in Colorado. Um, I use a mixture of the hot and the mild. Um, you can also get uh, a variation of the chili ristras at Sprouts or Sunflower Market, whatever it is on your side in your neck of the woods. Um, this one happens to be the Fiesta Brown. It is a bit smaller, so you'll need multiple uh, packages of these. And then what I'm going to use today is I'm going to use a mixture of this. I actually got this at the um, at a festival. So these were labeled medium, but these are hot. These are really hot and I'm going to mix them with the mild because they're just too hot for me to just use this alone. But if you like it spicy, by all means, use the hot one. If you don't like it spicy at all, then use the mild. Um, and then you're going to need hominy. So the Juanitas brand, you can get this in the uh, Hispanic, se Hispanic section or the international section. Um, I really love this brand because it's a little bit firmer in texture. Um, and you're going to be boiling um, this stew for quite a while and I don't like it when the hominy gets super, super soft and mushy. Um, so I, that's why I like the Juanitas brand. They have uh, went ahead and put a fast one on us and went from a larger um, 28 ounces I believe this is. Yes, 29 ounces and they've knocked it down to 25 ounces. Huh, you tried to pull a fast one on us Juanitas but we caught you. So, but I do love this brand um, because it does not get super soft and mushy, which I do not like. I love the firmer texture of it. Um, I did have to buy when I did make um, the pozole last time. I couldn't find the Juanitas. They were out and I had to use the store-bought brand, but I, I don't like this brand. This is the Kroger brand because it is already mushy in texture. It's too, too soft. And after boiling it for two hours, it's just I don't like it, so th this is why I love this brand. You're going to need some uh, chicken broth. You're also going to need a myriad of spices. We have salt, uh, garlic powder, and oregano. If you don't like to use just plain old garlic powder, powder feel free to just use garlic salt. Um, you are going to have a little bit of salt in your chicken broth, um, but by all means, use whatever you want. You just won't need as much garlic salt um, if you're using, you just won't need as much of the garlic salt if you're not going to use the garlic and the salt uh, individually. But I'm going to use the garlic powder and the salt 
because that's how my mom makes it, so that's how I'm going to do it. Um, you're going to need onions. If you have one large onion, go ahead and use that. I only have small ones, so I'm going to use two. And you're also going to need a myriad of kitchen recipe, um, kitchen recipe. You're also going to need a myriad of kitchen weaponry. Um, you're going to need a large stock pot. You're going to need a blender and or food processor, a knife, a can opener, a wooden spoon, and a measuring cup, microwave safe. So let's go ahead and clean this up. We're going to do the stew in around three steps because I think it's easier for me to teach it to you that way. So we're gonna clean all this up and we're gonna get ready for our next step. Okay, so um, one other thing you're going to need is you're going to need to fill your stock pot with water. This is a nine quart stock pot. We're gonna fill it probably um, a little bit less than two thirds because we are putting the baby backs in there. We're going to be putting our hominy in there. So we need enough water for the uh, meat to boil, but we don't wanna fill it up all the way because then there's nowhere to go when we add our pozole and our um, chili mixture. Let's go ahead and clean this up and we're gonna get ready to proceed with the first step in making this wonderful, delicious stew. Okay, so now we're gonna move on with step one. What I, what I went ahead and did is I took my nine quart stock pot and go ahead and come over this way. I took my nine quart stock pot and I went ahead and filled it with uh, water two thirds up. If you wanna go ahead and pan in here, sweetie. All right, I went ahead and filled it about two thirds, just right under the studs that hold the handles. That's usually my marker for everything. So that's about two thirds. Um, I'm going to go ahead and salt my water just a little bit. Um, just a good couple of pinches of salt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my flame on to around uh, between high and medium. So medium high. And we're gonna move on with our first step, which is to take our onions. And like I said before, if you have a large onion, go ahead and use just one large onion. I have two small onions, so I'm gonna use both of these. I'm going to take the ends off just because that's what my mom does, so that's what I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to just cut my onion, and please be very, very careful when using a knife. Um, try not to be talking to a camera when you're cooking. Um, so I'm just taking it, I'm not even peeling the outsides, I just went ahead and cut it to, into fours, putting it in my salted water, go ahead and just like that. And then I'm gonna take the second onion, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. All right, moving that over, and I'm just going to cut this into fours. All right, picking that up and pouring that into the pot. So now I have my two small onions cut into fourths. So that's good, we have our salted water. So now I'm going to clean up the ends from the onions and we are going to chop our, um, our baby bag rib. Okay, I went ahead and already cut the first rack. So this is what I've done and this is what you need to do if you're using any kind of ribs. Um, I usually cut them into singles. I do do some doubles as well, meaning these are single ribs. I went ahead and done some with two. So I'm just going to finish these off. Please be very careful. Cut them flat. Don't cut them like this because you'll have a better chance of chopping off some fingers if you do it that way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and put these in our salted water with the other rack of ribs. I guess it helps if I actually cut through that one. All right, and I know it seems like there is a lot of liquid in there, but it is going to boil for an hour and that liquid is going to go down. So as this boils, as when you boil any kind of meat, the scum or the, um, the uh, fat is gonna rise to the top and you're gonna use your spoon um, and a bowl just to scoop that off. But when we get to that step, I will show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna go ahead and let this boil, get this up to a rolling boil. We're gonna put the lid on it and we're going to set our timer for one hour. But as soon as we get that scum to the top, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, show you how to remove that. Okay, so my uh, stew has been boiling for approximately 15 minutes. I just have it on not really a hard rolling boil, just around, you know, a nice soft rolling boil. I do have a spoon um, across the top of 
the pot which helps to keep the stew from boiling over. So as you can see the scum aka the fat has risen to the top of the pot so I am going to scoop as much of that off as I can because I do not want that in my final dish. Okay, so what else you're going to need is just uh, a container to go ahead and skim the fat off in sort of a flattish spoon. I'm just going to remove my wooden spoon for now. And I'm just taking my spoon and just going up and underneath it just to get the fat off. Now, you are going to take some of the good broth out. That's just how it is. But we're just going to try and get most of that fat off the top because we... We do not want that at all. And you can also, after you get the chunks of fat, you can put most of the broth back in because we do want that. We just don't want that fat in there. Okay, as you can see, there are a few onions in there, but it's mostly fat. So I went ahead and poured the broth back in, and we'll probably have to do this maybe another time. Sometimes I've done it up to three times. So you definitely want to continue to do that and uh, so that is not in your final product. So let's go ahead and set this down, and then we'll check on it in a little bit and see if we need to do it again. Okay, so my stew has been boiling for about an hour and 10 minutes. I only had to scrape off, if you want to come closer, I only had to scrape off the uh, fat that rose to the top once, so that's good. That means uh, the ribs are not super fatty, so we went ahead and did that. And so now we're going to move on to the next step, and we're going to take some chicken broth. This, this one is from Trader Joe's. You can use any chicken broth. Uh, what I like about this is it's not overly salty. It does have salt in it. You can, uh, I would prefer, I didn't have, I'm just using what I have. Uh, but in the recipe, I will put the no salt uh, chicken broth. That way you can control how much salt you're gonna put in your dish. But this is really good because there's not that much salt in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to pour out two cups and I'm going to place it in the microwave for about a minute, a minute and a half, maybe up to two minutes. We just want to get it warm. We don't want it boiling, um, but we do want our uh, chicken broth warm. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to pour out two cups. And then I'm gonna place that in the microwave for one to two minutes just to warm it up. And then once I do that, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we have our chicken broth in the microwave. We are warming that up. So I went ahead and took my uh, dried chili or chili restress, whatever, however you know them as. I got these at, the, uh, at a festival and they were classified as medium, but they're really hot. So I'm gonna mix those with the mild like I always do. So I went ahead and, and took the stems off, as you can see and I discarded those. I'm just putting those into a separate bowl. So I went ahead and did four of those and now I'm going to do uh, four of the mild. So what I usually do for uh, my big stock pot is I do um, eight uh, chilies in all. If you want it hotter, use all hot. Um, if you want it mild, just use mild. Um, so, but I usually roughly do about eight. Used to do seven, but I think eight gives it more of a richer flavor. So I went ahead and took those stems off of the hotter ones, and now I'm going to open these up. These are the mild. And I'm just gonna pick out, um, you know, four halfway decent ones. And there's three. And there's four. And then what you want to do is you want to just break off the stems. You don't want the stems. I keep the seeds. We're gonna blend. Uh, we're gonna blitz it with the uh, chicken broth, and that's not a very good one. So I don't usually like to pick out the cracked ones like that. I just feel like you've lost all the flavor from the seeds. You really do get a lot of flavor from those seeds. That's why I leave them in. I'm kind of picky when it comes to it. So 
I usually buy two bags at a time just because I'm picky what goes into my dish. So that one's completely sealed. So what we want to do is just break off the top and I leave the seed. So we're going to do that to all of them. If you are a contact lens wearer, what I would probably do is wear gloves because any anytime you handle any kind of chili or any type of, of hot pepper, it's going to get on your hands and then you don't want to pop that in your eyes. So if you are a contact, contact lens wearer, I would advise wearing gloves. Okay, so we're going to take our... Um, our chicken broth and we're just going to pour that into our mixer again you can use a blender or a food processor whichever you prefer my mom uses a blender so that's why I am using that so I have my two cups of uh, chicken broth in there and then I'm just going to throw my chilies in there like so so I have my two cups of chicken broth, so I am just going to use a little bit of the reserve broth from uh, cooking the meat. This is the broth out of the pot. And I'm just going to put about a cup in there, um, just a little bit. I want a little more uh, liquid in there, and it just helps to blend it a little bit easier. So I'm going to set that aside. And we'll fast forward through the blending. Now, one thing about the blending, what you want to do is you want to let this blend for at least, I would say five minutes. You really want that to blitz up and completely uh, dissolve into the mixture. Um, you don't want chunks of seeds in there. You want it all to be blended. It's going to change color. And um, so it takes about five minutes to do it. So just be patient, put it on. Um, and then you can open up your cans of hominy while that is happening, but definitely let it blend for as long as you can because you want that to blend up completely. So we're going to go ahead and start that and then we'll move on to the next step. As you can tell from the video, it did change color. It went from a type of brownie goldy color and it changed from uh, orange to dark orange or red orange. And as you can tell, it did not get everything, but we got 99% of it uh, blitzed up. If you guys have a, um, a mixer that will blend that up completely, let me know because I will run out and get it. Um, but I think that's pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the top off and then we'll show you. Um, what your finished product is going to look like. So that is all of our chilies blitzed up in our warm or hot liquid and you're going to need to make sure that your chicken broth uh, is hot or you can use you can use your broth from your stew instead of chicken broth. I like to use both because that's what my brother and my mom use so and that really helps to blitz up the chilies. So 99% of it is blitzed up perfectly so I'm giving this a thumbs up. So we're going to go ahead and pour this into our pot. We can discard our wooden spoon and we're just going to go ahead and pour that in. And we're just going to want to give this a stir. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up the cans of our hominy. They are drained opened and drained. So I took the two largest ones. These are the, the 29 ounce ones. Uh, they know, um, if you can find them in this size, definitely get them because you get uh, more bang for your buck. And I'm just going to pour these in there. These have been drained. And one thing about this brand as well, if you're making uh, the pozole for an army, they do sell the extra large cans. I don't know how many ounces they are, but they do sell them in an extra large quantity if you're making several pots of this, if you're feeding an army or you know if you're making it for church or whatever you need to make it for, they do sell them in the extra large cans, So, which is good. So that is 
two cans of hominy. So we're gonna go ahead and add that third can. So I have a nine uh, quart pot. If you have a smaller um, pot, which I, I'll take out in a little bit and show you, you're probably only going to need two cans. Um, but if you have a larger pot like this, I would probably add three. Um, and that looks good as far as ratio goes, I can tell just by looking at it. All right, so we're gonna preliminary uh, season this. Um, I'm going to add some garlic and some oregano, um, and then we're gonna let that boil for another hour, and then before we serve it, we're gonna taste it again because we may need to add a little bit more salt, um, but we'll see. So I'm gonna grab my spices and I'll be right back. Okay, so the spices you're gonna need, you're going to need some garlic powder and some oregano and some salt. So I went ahead and measured everything off. I have, um, one and a half teaspoons. I have about one teaspoon of oregano and about one and a half teaspoons of uh, garlic powder, and then I have some salt. So we're gonna go ahead and pour these in. So I'm just gonna pour my garlic powder in. Remember, we're just pre-seasoning this. We may have, we will adjust the seasoning as it boils because it will taste differently. So what I like to do is I like to crush up my oregano. Okay, and then we're going to add some salt. So I'm gonna do probably three good pinches of salt. Remember we salted the water as well and our chicken broth does have some salt in it. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that up. So we're gonna go ahead and just take our spoon and we're just gonna mix this up. We're gonna increase the temperature again just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick my lid on and I'm just gonna leave it kind of a jar just so some of the steam can escape. Uh, we're gonna let this boil for another hour, but halfway through at the, at the half hour mark, we're gonna, we're going to taste it and we're gonna see how it tastes. If we need to adjust the seasoning, we will. We may have to add just a little bit more salt or a little bit more garlic. Um, so we will check it in about a half hour and then we will get our, um, our condiments together that go on top of the pozole and we're gonna go ahead and plate it and serve it. So we'll see you in about a half hour. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes uh, since we added our uh, chili mixture to our stew and I'm just going to taste it um, and check and see if I need to season it a little bit more. Now that it's been boiling for a little while, as you can see, it is looking really, really good. So that is what it looks like about halfway through. Starts off dark and then gets a little bit lighter. All right, so now that I've stirred that up, I'm just going to take a taste. This is gonna be really hot, so be careful. Mm, that's really good. I wouldn't put anything in it. That's perfect. I'm not gonna season it at all because I think it's perfect because we have some condiments we can put on at the end uh, when we plate it up. So that is perfect. No more seasoning. So I'm gonna see you in about 30 minutes and uh, then we'll finish it off. All right, our stew is finally done. So we're gonna go ahead and plate it up and then put all of the rest of our condiments on it. And then we're going to taste this baby. So here I'm gonna take my spoon if you wanna come over here and that way everyone can see what the final result looks like. So uh, the meat is super tender. I'm actually gonna grab the meat first and then I'll go ahead and put some of the broth in there. So really the meat is just falling off the bone at this point, it is so good. It is so juicy, it tastes so great. And then the rest of my family and I, they're waiting to eat and we're gonna be beating each other up trying to get the stew. Okay, so our stew is done. We have, uh, excuse the noise, uh, they're refinishing the front door, so you're gonna hear a drill, so I apologize. So let's get this done. Um, I went ahead and put the stew in the bowl and now we're gonna put all of our fixins on it. It makes it that much better. You can leave it just like this. You don't have to add anything, but in my house, we like to have the fixins and it doctors it up and makes it tasty that much more. So let's go over them real fast. I went ahead and 
shredded really thin some cabbage this is just some green cabbage you can use purple cabbage if you feel like it um, and just make it super super thin you can either grate it on your grater or you can slice it with a really sharp knife which is what i did we have some limes that are chopped up and quartered we have some oregano i have some um ch red chili flakes or chili piquet whatever you prefer to call it we have some salt and some pepper and some garlic and then so I'm just going to have a little bit of both. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to put some red chili flakes and I'm going to put a little bit of oregano. going to pull this apart so you can see how tender that meat is and it's just falling off the bone really really good it is super hot because it just came off the stove I just want a taste of that meat and a little bit of broth mm-hmm so good so tasty nice and tender it is perfect it feeds an army. It's great for a hangover. You know, it is, it is what it says. So again, like I said, you can make this not using uh, the step where we did the chili and the chicken broth, and you can just have it as the meat broth with the hominy, or you can go ahead and do it everything here, which makes it so much better. Thank you so much for visiting me here in my kitchen as always. Uh, the sh I will have the shopping list in the description box below as well as the recipe. So look down there. If you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to send me an email or contact me on my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And um, I hope you enjoy it as I have enjoyed it. This, this dish is truly, truly something near and dear to my heart. It reminds me of my brother. I have two really good memories of my brother uh, concerning this dish. So I am so glad to share it with you. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know how you get on and send me a picture um, if you do make it. And I appreciate you uh, sticking with me through this video. If there's any other recipes you want me to make, feel free to let me know. So thank you so much uh, for visiting me here in my kitchen. And so now let's eat. So I'll see y'all again next time. Ciao everybody. Bye-bye.